You're only young ones, so make sure your youthful days are useful days. Welcome to this youth-focused edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. Coming up... Well, spread the news and recycle more. Stop use less aerosol products for women, especially. And also, you know, just stop dumping plastic bottles and those stuff in the rivers. Young persons share their views on a wide range of matters. And later, the youth program and farming tips from one who is in the field. Please stay with us. The JIS Heritage Poster Competition is here again. If you are an artistic teenager, the JIS Heritage Poster Competition is just for you. All registered secondary school students are eligible to enter. All you have to do is this. Complete the entry form on the JIS website, jis.gov.jm. Then, create a poster using images provided in the picture resources on the JIS website. And the topic, a moment in the life of a Jamaican national hero. Ensure that your poster is no larger than 11 inches by 17 inches and keep a copy of your poster. Posters will be judged on interpretation of the topic, originality and presentation. Now for the submission details. Upload computer designed posters using a cloud storage service such as Dropbox, SkyDrive or Google Drive. Mail or drop off illustrated posters at the JIS head office or Montego Bay office. Deadline for submission is Saturday, November 7, 2015. So come on, unleash your creativity and win lots of prizes. For more information, contact the Jamaica Information Service at 926-374026, extension 2137-2023, or email heritageposter at jis.gov.jm. Good day, I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, November 3. The island is looking to capitalize on the Blue and John Crow Mountains addition to the World Heritage Site list by way of cultural tourism. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller says countries that have sites on the World Heritage List have seen increases in visitor arrivals between 1 and 5 percent in the first year of inscription. Mrs. Simpson-Miller's address was read by Culture Minister Lisa Hanna in Moortown, Portland on Friday as a function to launch the area as a World Heritage Site. We are already setting up and getting reports that the Blue and Jonkra Mountains is seeing an increase in local and international visitors. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a good place with the mixed status of our World Heritage Site. The Youth Minister said partnerships were being explored to implement several economic opportunities in the area, such as craft, food, living museums and homestay tourism. The Ministry of Education has partnered with the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, to launch a pilot project to train and mentor parents in mathematics. The project, which was launched recently, seeks to have parents work with their children to improve learning outcomes in the subject. We believe that if parents lose their phobia and ignorance of mathematics, they are likely to encourage their children to do the subject and assist them in doing their homework. And I should tell you that parents who want to can now uh, pass this program and go on and gain the alternate high school diploma. The pilot will entail the use of coaches and trainers who have been identified to work with the selected parents in workshops and or face-to-face -face home visits. The government of Japan also assisted with the project's development. More private sector merchants are being urged to join the newly launched Team Jamaica Value Card program. Under the initiative, over 100,000 government workers will receive cashback benefits when they purchase goods and services from participating private sector companies. I appeal to all those other private sector merchants and entities and all those who can offer more benefits to our public sector workers because we don't have any wage freeze now. We have lifted the wage freeze, but we are not where we would like them to be in terms of remuneration. The minister responsible for the public service was speaking at Friday's launch of the Team Jamaica Valley Card program. 
over 1,500 merchants are being recruited and equipped to participate in the program. The value cards are being issued through the Human Resource Department of the various government departments. So far, 45,000 cards have been issued, with another 70,000 being prepared for distribution in the coming weeks. Despite the constraints of the economic reform program, government has committed itself to continuing to honor all obligations signed with public sector workers. At Friday's wage agreement signing with public sector nurses, Minister responsible for the Public Service Horace Daly said salary adjustments were being made as best as possible. And while we are not in intensive care, we are still on a little medication. We have to complete the reform program for the benefit of every single Jamaican. The nurses received a 7% salary increase over the 2015-2017 contract period and increases in all allowances. Friday's signing brings the government to 90% of wage negotiations with public sector workers. Plans are underway to provide the Jamaica Fire Brigade with additional fire trucks and a fire boat to complement its fleet. The government has, uh, has an order three more uh, fire trucks. We're also preparing to order a fire boat and we're repairing the fire boat as we have over in Otorius. So um, we are giving maximum attention to the fire brigade within the limited resources. Local Government Minister Noel R. Scott was speaking at the annual Fire Safety Awareness Week Open Day in Maypen Clarendon on Wednesday. And finally, government is focused on reducing the number of deaths associated with non-communicable diseases, NCDs. The latest initiative will target pregnant women. Our quest to reduce NCDs will have to be achieved through a holistic and all-encompassing approach, starting with the pregnant woman and even before as she looks at her own diet. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Marion bullock de Cass was speaking Monday at the Dr. Layla Winter Commemorative Conference on NCDs in Children held at the Boston Monte Hospital for Children. Dr. bullock de Cass said the Health Ministry's five-year National Strategic and Action Plan was working to reduce the high levels of morbidity, disability and mortality caused by non-communicable diseases. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thank you for watching. Don't make diseases spread, wash your hands with soap and water instead. Wash them regular or use a hand sanitizer, make sure the germs them dead. Touching your eyes or your mouth or your nose, wash your hands before you do things like those. After you use the bathroom before preparing food, come on, wash your hand them clean. Cause it's so easy for germs multiply, you better wash your hands, it can save your own life. Wash your hand them clean, the body spread no disease now, and washing is key. A message from the Ministry of Health and PAHO. The Youth Upliftment Through Employment Youth Program for over four years has been providing job placement and mentorship opportunities for hundreds of young people under a public-private partnership agreement. Learn more about this program and how you could benefit. on job experience and now doing that and getting a little experience of that I can know what the working world is all about so when I go out there I can know what to do. Each day we receive a stipend of 15 Angela and I'm very grateful and thankful for that because sometimes we don't have any money. Providing support where support is needed. Andre and Chantel are only two of the hundreds of young persons who have benefited from a government-endorsed private sector-led initiative called Youth, Youth Upliftment Through Employment. Youth was conceptualized as a private sector response to increasing levels of youth unemployment and unemployability within particularly vulnerable communities in Kingston and St. Andrew. We work with young persons aged 18 to 29 to guide them along the process of vocational skills training, literacy and numeracy upgrading, as well as facilitating internships and employment opportunities. Youth has been around since 2011. While it's primarily driven by the private sector, critical government partnerships have been forged. We have worked with the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning to facilitate the training of our, what we call our pre-skills program. So that's basic literacy and numeracy skills support. We have also worked with the National Works Agency as well as the National Youth Service 
in providing um, training for young persons in business administration as well as education. We have a particularly innovative construction skills program that we undertake with the support of the National Housing Trust, JEEP, as well as the Heart Trust NTA. And it is a one-year initiative that is designed to train young persons in construction skills. Our young persons are currently engaged in classroom as well as on-the-job placement. And participants testify to the impact it has had on their lives. Chantel and Andre are part of the Youth Build project and they speak proudly of how much they've grown since their involvement with youth. There's a lot of change in my life and I give thanks for a young, long, young man like me. Things that I usually do, I find myself stop doing it just because I have a youth and I'm going out now and trying to make it a better half for him. I would like for the persons who started this program to continue for the young generation, just the youths them out there in the garrison that don't hear the news, get the word spread to them and give everybody a second chance, get everybody deserve a second chance and I hope it continues, I don't want it any year. Youth organizers were very deliberate in their selection of participants, singling out the most vulnerable and most deserving for assistance. The selection of the communities was very much guided by the community profiles produced by the Social Development Commission as well as any data available on youth unemployment and unemployability, studies done by the World Bank, um, Inter-American Development Bank, etc. It was also guided by in-depth community consultations. Besides providing job placement opportunities, the youth program also has an entrepreneurship component. Our entrepreneurship program has two main components. One is the Junior Achievement Model, which we do in partnership with Junior Achievement Jamaica, where they train our young persons, guide them through the process of writing their business plan, and going through product testing. We actually have a group now who are doing their semi-liquid seasoning. So they're, they're working with a scientific research council to actually get all the requisite sign-offs to get it into the market. The second is an incubator type initiative where support is provided for business opportunities within the private sector. Youth has yielded good results and the program, which was initially intended to be a two-year intervention, is already set to be expanded. One of the larger mandates for youth was to challenge the whole notion of social exclusion and to, to tear down some of the concepts that we've had about inner city communities and to provide a meaningful way of bringing young persons who have been traditionally excluded from the formal workspace and to kind of tear down some of those barriers. So there are plans afoot to continue that and certainly for you to build I know that uh, a cycle two is in the works. If the program is to continue to achieve success your help is needed. You can provide mentorship, internship opportunities or permanent employment for qualified participants or even donate funds to youth's work. Contact the Youth Program Management Office at 63 to 67 Knoxford Boulevard, Kingston 5, telephone 9206254 or send an email to youth at developmentoptionsja.com. This is Romain Virgo. I'm your appeal to all of the youths them to just stay away from crime and violence. We know the temptation, the money, the fast life. People say them rate you. But that will only take you nowhere. If you stay in school and focus, then you can achieve anything. Be your own leader. A gang is a dead end. A message from the Ministry of National Security. I Am Connected is the theme for Youth Month 2015 and as you may have heard in our previous programs, a host of activities are underway island-wide to get our young people connected on important issues like climate change. It 
It's the second staging of the Youth Climate Change Conference and we are getting in on the action. As young people, you are capable of participating in and changing the society in which you are all valued members. As such, you have an important role to play in addressing and affecting the issues of our world, including the factors that contribute to climate change. Very important. Have I been sleeping? About 1,000 students from high schools across the island, all discussing the global issue of climate change at Jamaica's Youth Conference of Parties. School Zone was happy to engage in converse with our students to hear their views on the matter. As it relates to climate change, there are many different factors that we must take into consideration. But um, probably front and first and foremost is actually information. As, it, as you know, that knowledge is power. So if we can inform this generation of what climate change is and the role it plays in our future, then I believe that that is the first step in reducing the heat that we're experiencing right now. On top of that, with the new generation upcoming, they're very involved in technology, technology, and if they can use that technology to advance what uh, um, the problem the situation with climate change is right now, then we will be better off in 10 to 20 years' time, given that this generation is really advanced in technology. Well, spread the news and recycle more, stop use, use less aerosol products for women especially and also, you know, just stop dumping plastic bottles and those stuff in the rivers. So I'm here with my friends Patrina and Danielle from the Irwin High School in Montego Bay and they'll be sharing with me their views on climate change. Let me start with Petrina. Petrina, what do you think you can do to tackle the issue of climate change? Educate. Education is always better. And why do you think it's so important to, to get the young people on board? They say the youth are the future of tomorrow. So starting from the youth is better than ever. Mm -hmm. The conversation also included our youth with disabilities who had much to say on the matter. It is important that government continue the conversation surround climate change with persons with disabilities and that can be done by having more workshops to include them. And through the language of signing, the deaf community shared their views. There's a place in your heart and I know that it is love. Those are some of the impacts of climate change which, unfortunately, have already started. Our students believe, however, that if we change our ways, we can slow down some of these effects. Their views are supported by government and other stakeholders. One of the solutions I think we should really push is that the point where they said that um, public sectors and private sectors should be involved, that really shows that the whole country is, you know, coming together, public and private, to really solve this issue, even though it can't really be solved, but to slow it down and to get things on the right track. Individually, there's a whole lot, a whole lot of power that you have. And that power begins with understanding the need to do certain things to improve our common situation, whether it be shutting off the light, uh, recycling or buying products and working and supporting companies that support the environment. I hope that things are put in place after we have done all this talking. They certainly will, Javon, as the outcome of the views of all these youth will be incorporated into the current climate change framework document for schools in Jamaica. Suggestions included we should include a paragraph on the, on the use of wind turbines where appropriate because not all schools would, would be in a, in a local where those particular technologies can be used. All future building plans are to, be are to include and incorporate energy in, in, in efficiency in their core goals. It was a fruitful convo for all the students and in the end, outstanding schools and students were awarded. Overall champion was the Westwood High School from Trelawney. Kudos to you guys. So to Jamaicans out there, students, parents, everyone, just help to make a change. 
teamwork makes the dream work. So each of us has have to do our part in order to make everything work out in the end. All right, what do you plan to do? I'll ensure anything electric is off before I leave any empty room. That's a wrap for today's School Zone. Till next time, I'm Tamara. Householders, business people, school administrators, be on the alert. Help control the mosquito population. Destroy breeding sites. Empty old tires and all other containers where water can settle. Bore holes in old cans. Cover water drums and garbage cans. Wash flower pots and vases and clean pet dishes regularly. Protect yourself from mosquito bites. Cover your body as much as possible and use mosquito repellent containing D. The JIS Heritage Essay Competition is here again. If you're a primary or preparatory school student aged 9 to 12, you may enter. Write an essay on the topic, A Day in the Life of My Favorite National Hero. Ensure your essay is 400 to 500 words. Include a title page and list of references, with JIS being one of the sources. And submit the essay using the application form on the JIS website, jis.gov.jm. Deadline is Saturday, November 7, 2015. So start writing your essay today! For more information, contact the Jamaica Information Service at 926-374026, extension 2137, or 2023, or email heritageessay at jis.gov.jm. Finger licking jerk chicken, hell fish and bami. We we'll run down yam and banana, roast bread fruit, sweet potato pudding. Mm, mm, Jamaica food sweet. So let's make a pledge to use more local produce and less foreign goods. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Eat what we grow, grow what we eat continues to be the national agriculture slogan and many youth are seeing its value. So much so that a number of them have begun considering agriculture as a viable career option. Swain Sangster is one of the many examples. My name is Swain Sangster. Um, I attend Newell High School and I am from the parish of St. Elizabeth. When I get older, I have a lot of choices to make, but uh, I would like to have a business in farming to help to feed the nation. Attracting young people to farming is a target of the Agriculture Ministry as it seeks to deepen the pool of farmers and increase productivity. Through the Jamaica 4-H Club and the School Garden Program, young persons like Swain are honing the skills and cultivating the passion needed to become master farmers. What I really like about being in the field, seeing how things grow and reaping it and actually what I mostly like about being a farmer is eating what I grow. That's exactly the direction in which the Ministry of Agriculture is positioning the country through its Eat What You Grow, Grow What You Eat campaign. One of my favorite things to plant is corn because it looks kind of nice. Uh, it tastes better than uh, almost everything in my field. This budding farmer refuses to look at farming as a rejected occupation. Instead, he says, being a farmer actually means uh, you got food on your on the table for your family to eat. Every time somebody put a food to their mouth, you see a little smile and kind of like how oh, you smile. Feel like say, you contribute to the 
makes my reading up on their face. And so, in pursuit of a business in farming, Swain uses his grandfather's farm as the ideal training ground. So one of the things I know about farming is how to plant corn, beans, um, when it is fit for, to pick a banana. From his grandfather, he learns valuable lessons. Being very punctual and into care and grow. So you really can't get in a hit. For his part, Osborne Blair believes that Swain has all he needs to become a top farmer. Yes, I see him like somebody who would be industrious in farming. I expect him to, I would say, more talented, more than I do. For he is in a high school, and I know the, the tactics I had in my like a small farming. He had greater tactics in the school. And while pursuing what he loves, boys will be boys. Shawty, will you, will you let me take you home? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, trouble though, he get enough trouble. And sometimes he's very, very annoying. And he loves to laugh too. That's because Swain loves to give jokes and play pranks on his schoolmates. He's like a class clone. He would give people names and start calling them and everyone would laugh. Still, Swain is dedicated to his studies and, according to his friends, always willing to lend a helping hand. Like if you don't have something, he'll give you like a, like you don't have a pencil and he, and he has one, he'll like break it into two and give me peace and he'll take peace. And this generous side to Swain extends to his future plans. My brother is also like farming, so I would like to create a business that they could also be co-owners with me. It is Swain's dream to become a billionaire one day, and he believes that with hard work, he will become one. He do good in farming. When, most of the times when he go up to farm, he does, he does well. He always get good scores in agriculture. Swain Sangster, passing on the message of growing what we eat and eating what we grow fulfilling the Agriculture Ministry's mission of getting more young people involved in farming. Ask yourself if what you're doing today is getting you closer to where you want to be tomorrow. That's our final charge to you as we close the pages of today's magazine. If you have comments or feedback, email us at jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm and stay in the know by using our website jis.gov.jm or via our social media pages on Facebook and Twitter. You can also download the JIS News application from the Google Play Store. This has been another informative edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkins and thank you for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.